Excalibur goes to break, stating that MJF is demanding a microphone. So when they come back, MJF enters. He insults Albany, telling them to be quiet. And you might have missed it, but there was a line that Excalibur got in here that Moxley has gone to the showers after his match. So mm-hmm. in he is not able to listen to this and more importantly, to respond to this because there were some big lines here that I really like the fact when they go to that level and because it, it, it is a bit nitpicky, I find, if you're why is Moxley not storming the ring? But I think it's also a fair assessment that you can have as a viewer of like a John Moxley type of character would not just be sitting in the back and watching this happen. So they gave you a reason that he would not be storming the ring to attack this guy. I like it. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking about it, but you're right. Like it's it's a good bit of attention to detail. MJF says he has not slept in seven days since the John Moxley segment. That is terribly unhealthy. You should certainly yeah. sleep a couple times a week for sure. Mm-hmm. He says that Moxley, he looked into his eyes. He has no fear and that pisses MJF off. And he is not the same kid when they crossed paths the last time, which was all out 2020 when they had their, their title match and Moxley won. He, he was, is not, he pointed out the podium and the whole vote for MJF thing, which was that's that angle back. Then. Yes. Yes. He too is trying to forget 2020 as, as most people are. He says that uh, he is not playing a character. Whereas John is, he's a joke. And I read your book, John, and he cites Moxley's childhood growing up uneducated, poor, and white trash from the sticks, just like you people from Albany, and how John got bullied, and he says that you are still that scared little boy from the slums of Cincinnati, but now you're old enough to drown your trauma in alcohol like a worthless drunk. And then he singles out a guy in the front row, calling him fat boy, and said that, yes, John, I mean, got... I don't know who specifically he was pointing at, but like, the person who responded to the taunt did not look fat to me. <laughs> you know, he looked in very good shape. Yes. This was, uh, you know, the, the, the front row has really got called upon with these insults over the last few weeks between punk and now MJF. Yeah. And usually over like their weight. And again, I, I don't, I mean, I don't, I wonder if these people are even like considered overweight and even so what, if, even if they were, then what, but like it's, we just, we just seem to be as, you know, defaulting to that line. He says that John got sober and that did take intestinal fortitude to beat that disease. But my brain is more dangerous than your disease and bad things happen when people get in my way. So, John, go take your vacation, skip Arthur Ashe and don't win my title. And he then references Moxley's return promo he cut after he uh, returned earlier this year and mentioning the demon that circles over his head, telling him that he doesn't deserve what he has and how it will cost him everything. And if he doesn't tread lightly, he's going to learn that MJF is that demon. And this is a demon you can't slay. And from there, he transitions to the men that helped him get this chip at All Out, a stable on retainer led by his best friend who he has known since he is 19 years old, referring to Stokely Hathaway and The Firm. But before we get to uh, chapter two of this segment, uh, the MJF promo way. I thought it was excellent. You know, it's right now. I mean, what what else do you expect? Right. But I think what what is um, for me impressive about this is that they have to, to pivot from, you know, MJF's program with Punk to MJF's program with John Moxley. And I I haven't missed CM Punk. You know, um, I think Moxley, you can argue, has I mean is not just a great substitute, but I think to me, like maybe even a better program for MJF, it's fresher. You know, the match is going to be better. Uh, there's just a great deal of, I think, positive sentiment surrounding John Moxley right now. And MJF calling him inauthentic is about the best heel sort of like line you can have because Moxley is arguably the most authentic person on the entire roster. And the insinuation that he's playing any sort of character is like brilliant heal sort of like you know um disillusion um he also does a lot of research for these promos you know between reading his book and uh going back and and you know listening to that promo that he cut uh, upon coming back he you could tell he's a guy who's very much a student and much like in the punk feud looks up a lot of i think old material um 
This is the use. Conor McGregor playbook. Like that he would he would research all these mm-hmm. obscure details or he'd uh, he, he'd wear like clothing that would have a reference to something so obscure, but like he would research his opponents and then have all this ammunition. And mm-hmm. I, I thought of that listening to, to this as well, that yeah, he's, he's demonstrated this in, in other promos. So uh, well worth the, the Kindle buy for MJF. Great advertising for the book. Yes, that's true. Yeah. People are going to see, is it, was he lying? Um, I, I thought, I thought it was a great promo. The question would be, certainly you're going in this direction. Uh, does this necessarily need to be for the title? Like you do have the guy with the chip. Um, I, I don't know if this necessarily telegraphs Moxley winning this, this tournament next week. You could, I don't think there's going to be an outcry if Moxley is your champion. Uh, but I, I think also you can, you could go with this program and this is just a great grudge program as Danielson could do something with the title for the next few months. MJF is waiting in the wings because this is a program that to me stands on its own already. And we've only had two segments of it from last week and this week. I think the latter is probably the better option. You know, I agree. I agree. Like you've escalated this feud now with this type of promo high enough that um, it's become more personal than, you know, just even a battle for the championship. Um, I don't expect, you know, you to cash in on MJF with that chip and, a Brian match is so soon. I, I think you could delay it, it, it you know, either till full gear or even maybe beyond possibly. Yeah. But more importantly, I want this, this man, John Moxley to finally get his vacation. Um, so <laughs> I don't, I don't anticipate him sticking around with the championship too long. So it could be, um, everyone cheers as a uh, John Moxley gets a, yeah, an injury angle at the end of this. I did the, you know, yeah, if it comes with the, I don't know, what, what does he like to do on vacation? What, what was he supposed to, where was he going? I, I don't know where they were going. I, I don't know. Um, okay, whatever it is, I hope he enjoys his time off. He deserves it. So the next part of this is uh, Stokely Hathaway, and uh, as they're being called, The Firm, which are uh, The Gun Club, W. Morrissey, Ethan Page, and Lee Moriarty uh, coming out with Stokely Hathaway. And MJF exits the ring, and Hathaway carries this whole segment. He says, it's not Sunday, but you're going to hear some gospel. And he explains that everything was a hustle and a con since double or nothing, that this was the guy kind of pulling the strings with his best friend, MJF. And all right, he was he was going to go fishing. So (laughs) there you have it for six weeks. Sure. Why not? That's a lot of fishing. There are plenty of fish. I would be done after three days of like, okay, I get it. This is fun and relaxing, (laughs) but I can't do this for six weeks. There's no way Mm, with a baby. How much fishing are you? I, I don't know. Wait, how much fishing have you done in the last month? Uh, a grand total of zero. I've caught no fish in the past, past past six years, I should say. Okay. He convinced MJF not to quit AEW and beca- because that would give the people what they want. So he came up with the MJF support system while creating opportunities for all of these others that he had been recruiting. And tonight is the rare occasion that you will see all of us together because when MJF doesn't need need them, we will go our separate ways. I am not a publicist. I am not a manager and I'm not an assistant. I am a friend with a network to make anything happen. And Mentions kind of like infiltrating all these different groups in AEW, building up intel on all of them and obtaining gossip because the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice and the juicier the gossip, the more power I have and mentions how blackmail turns him on. Interesting. Yes. It's good line. Double entendre. And yes. then he goes he goes one by one explaining what each of these individuals wants that he has recruited. Uh W Morrissey was the most vague. He just he wants whatever he wants was pretty much how it was left. It's like he just he wants stuff. So they called him Morrissey or Stokely at least called him Morrissey. He also called him Big Bill, which I'm fine I, with Big Bill over yeah, W Morrissey. I'm fine with Big Bill. So, yes, we, we've been over this one. Uh, he just gives uh, Big Bill a hug and says that he can have anything he wants. Uh, Lee Moriarty, who has dyed his hair green, it's his time to become a star and bring honor back to the ROH Pure Championship. The guns get this. OK, they are not boys. They are men that do not walk in the shadow of their father. Uh, yeah. So Stokely is their Rhea Ripley. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. And they are going to become tag team champions, and they will be taken seriously. And the last one is Ethan Page, who I would say got the the best response of, of everybody when he was introduced. And he has known Stokely for over 10 years. He wants to represent Canada and win the All-Atlantic Championship. Forget the Maple Leafs getting a Stanley Cup. This is what has starved this country way for all of these years. The All-Atlantic Championship and Hamilton's own is going to secure this championship. And I think that he's going to try to do this in Toronto. That would be my guess. Ooh, okay. That's a great call. Yeah. I mean, listen, we our country needs it right now. We need a champion. We need, we need this All-Atlantic Championship. And Stokely warns that when they are around, you run with us or you run from us. <laughs> interesting um the way he kind of put this stable so they are a stable but they're also um more of a loose affiliation you know it's it it, it's it's a stable that certainly you look at it and it has the the concern that yeah it's like you have this link to this big star but the big star is not going to be around he is going to be you know the odd time he will be associated um, they're, they're the Avengers, kind of. You know, you, you have membership, but you're not going to see them together unless it's a special occasion. If the if the Avengers were going for, like, mid-tier titles as well. Right. Sure. So, um, okay. Yeah, but I, I thought Stokely was great in this segment. I think he is um, a huge part. He, he is the biggest part of of this whole act. And it's a, it's an odd assortment of sort of these random parts on the AEW roster, but it's, it's really going to come down to if they can like gel as a group, if they get consistent time on television and, and they, and they get over, obviously. I don't find them too odd of an assortment at all. Like I think they have all the makings of like, you know, all your ingredients for a successful stable and a tag team and a technical guy and a big guy and a guy who could speak. So, um, I almost like wonder if we should be, we'll be seeing them more often than I think what, what they sort of put here, um, what they conveyed here. Like I could see this group, if it's successful being an, another, you know, group that you would do with a blood and guts with, for instance. Um, but it sounds like it's going to be a bit more different and maybe a bit more looser than that. So, but is Stokely sort of like the, like, will Stokely be with every single person? I think so. Yeah. I think he'll yeah, be, I think so too. he'll be the, default like leader of the group mm-hmm. 